Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. Wrapping up the reviews of the various Black Panther trades in honor of Black Panther out in theaters today. Actually opened last night. Um, this is Avengers of the New World Part 1. Basically the bridge between a uh, nation under our feet and then the Marvel Legacy run of Black Panther that's currently going on now. Uh, so this collects issues 13 through 20, or 13 through 18. Retails for $16.99. Uh, and it's a pretty solid read. Uh, written by ta Coates, and then there's Chris Sprouse, Wilfredo Torres, Adam Gorham, Jason Burroughs, Terry Pallett, Walden Wong, Carl Story, Dexter Vines, Laura Martin, and Andrew Crossley. Um, Alright, so we, we have discussed the first three volumes. The first three volumes is all about revolution in Wakanda. Um, the the uh, you know, King T'Challa and the, the government of Wakanda, the, the, the uh, kingdom, the, the ruling people were kind of besieged on all sides. Uh, there's uh, the Dora Milaje, uh, the uh, kind of um, the renegade ones um, in the north. Then you had Tetu and uh, his forces coming from the south. Um, Things didn't look good, and you know the story wrapped up in a very interesting way. Uh, Coates gave a very like political kind of solution to it all. It was pretty solid over you know overall. Like as a, as a poli sci nerd, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the political stuff more than anything else. Uh, and that was interesting about it because it kind of veered away from the traditional beat people up with your fists uh, storytelling. This is more towards that traditional superhero storytelling. You can see a transition from those first three volumes through this one to the Marvel Legacy as, as Coates kind of pivots things uh, towards, I would say, the average Marvel storytelling, the more traditional stuff that we've got. And that's not to say that there's not some interesting concepts in here, but definitely the political, socio-political discussions and philosophy of the first three volumes isn't present in this fourth one. Uh, this fourth one, one does bring up a really interesting concept, though, and it's the thing that's always stuck out to me about Wakanda, in that this is a nation that's technologically advanced, um, you know, supposedly the most advanced in the world, yet at the same time, faith plays a massive role in their life. Uh, they talk to their gods openly, they actually think their gods bestow um, their, their kind of good, you know, bountiful manna from heaven type stuff. Um, and I think that's always a really, it's an interesting dichotomy. You've got this very advanced technology, technological society, but at the same time, they're also very, like, polytheistic, um, I would say more kind of like an Egyptian religious-based system. I, I will I'll be honest, I don't know African religions very well. I've got basically what I learned in school with, like, Egypt, and that's about it. But they're, they're a polytheistic society, they believe in multiple gods, uh, so at least there's that. So it kind of really reminds me of more like the Egyptian gods, like Sun, Ra, or, you know, Ra, st Set, stuff like that. Um, very similar concepts. So if there's, if there is an example of that in like African religions, or I mean, I know there are, I just couldn't tell you what the hell they are. Um, you know, drop in some Wikipedia articles, it'd be interesting stuff to read, uh, in the comments. So, uh, back to the thing. So, uh, this really kind of explores that idea of this really advanced technological society having to deal with the wrath of their gods. Um, and I think that's really kind of fascinating. So the first three volumes was really about this transition of a uh, monarchy and a society ruled by a small class of individuals to a democratic society, this blended uh, governmental system. Uh, this seems to be that kind of trying to figure out that balance between technology and religion itself. Uh, there's a twist at the end, which is kind of a very fascinating statement that could probably be debated in a book club for an hour on uh, easily. But, um, you know, overall, like, it's, a, it's a much more traditional story, so there's a lot of punching, uh, but it's got some very interesting concepts in it. It's definitely the weakest of the four trades. Um, I actually think Coates is stronger in the second and third volume where he kind of really got started to get going. Uh, this fourth one kind of, I think, falls into the traditional punch, em, punch the bad guys type of storytelling, which honestly is freaking boring because it's everywhere else. Like, I liked the being able to see some political maneuvering and some intelligent discussion. Again, interesting concepts here, but in the end, it really is just this, it just feels like a typical superhero. Like, that special thing that made those first three volumes is, seems to fall apart here. So, uh, unfortunately, it's a bummer. 
it's still interesting, but it's just, it's not as good. Like, if the first three were A's, this one would be like a B minus type of thing. Um, so, still good, but just not quite there. Uh, I would actually maybe even make this like a C plus. It's just, something's off. Um, part of that has to do with the art, too. There's all these, like, I don't even know what type of creatures. There's snake guys and spider people, and this is a good example of that. I just, I think the design is kind of a little silly. Um, the art kind of falls apart at points. Um, I mean, just, while it's kind of cool in this, like, B-movie sort of thing, it's just, there's like a detail to it, and it just doesn't seem quite as good. Um, part of it, I think, is like an example like this. Like, that cover is awesome, but, you know, Dr. Faustus on the page just doesn't look as good. So you can kind of see there's like a drop-off in, uh, in some of the art. You know, obviously, covers tend to be better than the material within. Um, there's also just some some pages where like things shift weirdly, and you can tell it's multiple teams. Um, so there's yeah, there's some odd stuff here. But then there's like cool things like this, which is the the various gods of Wakanda. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of my my big issue with it. I, th I don't think the car the art is quite as good, and definitely the storytelling is not as solid as uh, previous volumes. Uh, yeah. And I'll be honest. Uh, the various variant covers here are pretty cool. Great art, I mean, comparatively to the, the actual story itself. Uh, and then we get some cool design work in the back. Uh, there's not quite as much material as there was in some of the other volumes, but still, you know, extra material is extra material. Uh, so basically, like, if you've read the first three volumes, you want to start reading the Marvel Legacy stuff, it's probably good that you read this. You don't have to read this. It, there is some kind of, like, follow-up. You do get a better idea as to what's going on within Wakanda now. Uh, but this, like, whole arc, even though it's a lot of issues, it's it's five issues versus, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, sorry, uh, uh, eight issues versus uh, the four of before. Um, sorry, six issues versus the four from before. It's just... Um, It just doesn't quite gel. Is like, like there's just there's something missing. It's just not as intelligent as basically what it comes down to it. It's much more punching, le less a lot less thinking. Uh, and if you figure it out, like I actually kind of like the thinking comics a bit more. Something that's a bit challenging. There's there's room for the other stuff, but come on, give me give me a little bit to like chew on and think about. Um, challenge me. I want like comics to challenge me. I like reading things to challenge me. Uh, and if you don't, like, it's totally cool, but it's just not my thing. Um, so, yeah, so I'm kind of in the middle on this one. It's If you've read the first three volumes, you've come this far, go for it. This is definitely not one to start off with, though. Uh, you're actually probably better starting with Marvel Legacy. Uh, you know, I've read, the, like, the first whatever two issues that came out, and it was, it was good. Um, but, again, more geared towards the punching. A lot less towards the thinking. Uh, so this is out in, in stores now. Uh, you should obviously go support your local comic book shop first and foremost. Uh, obviously go and support your local comic book shop. We got a link beneath this video. You put in your zip code. I'll tell you if a shop's near you. If there's no shop near you, well, we got some affiliate links to, to hook you up with. There are affiliate links, so we do get a small percentage of that. I do want to, uh, obviously, thank you for watching. You know, by doing that, you help support us and support our site alone. Like That alone supports us, so thank you. Now, if you're into Marvel, if you're into Black Panther, you're into comic books in general, hit us up every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. Until next time, keep reading those comics, make my Marvel, and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.